Well, today marks a somber anniversary as 20 years ago, two teen gunmen killed 13 people at Columbine High School in Colorado. Now, this was not the first school shooting, but at the time, it was the deadliest in U.S. history. The horrors of that day making all the more shocking because they played out on live television. Images of heavily armed SWAT teams descending on a school, the sight of students running for safety were burned into people's consciousness. And in the aftermath, metal detectors, armed guards and active shooter drills became the norm for schools in the United States. But in the years since Columbine, there have still been over 230 school shootings in that country. Well, for more, we're now joined by Jamie Emo. She is a survivor of the Columbine High School shooting. She is a gun violence prevention advocate as well, and she joins us right now in Philadelphia. So thank you for joining us today, Jamie. Michael, thank you for having me. Thanks for making the time. Well, you know, it's such an important topic. And, you know, I was going through the research, and you were only 15 at the time. I can't believe what you went through at such a young age. Here we are 20 years later. And I wonder, how has that event changed your life? There's a, a, a lot of ways, probably more than we have time to explain. Um, but growing up in, in, into an adult and working in education and then having kids of my own, it's completely changed my perspective on like how real this danger is. And as an adult, the responsibility as a voter and looking to my neighbors and wondering why they're not voting to make these changes when other countries like New Zealand and Australia are able to accomplish it in a matter of weeks. And we're here 20 years later with very little to show. Well, well, let me pick up on that point because we have seen uh, school shootings since Columbine. And I wonder how difficult that has been for you because uh, we, we see violence continue to claim lives, a large number of lives. We saw it recently in Parkland. We saw it in Sandy Hook with children who are so young. How difficult is it for you to see that unfold at the screens and home? Um, well, first off, I typically can't watch, like I can't watch live footage of things like that. It's just too much for me. Um, but yeah, there's been over 250,000 kids that have had a shooting in their schools since 1999. Uh, I work with a group called the Rebels Project and we provide peer support for mass shooting survivors. So I've actually connected and spoken with a lot of these kids and some of the faculty and staff and to know what they're facing one year and five year and 10 years later, um, it hurts a lot every time to see it happen. And um, to know also that it's not just the people that are there, it's the people in the community and the people nearby and there's family who live in other states that are affected and this kind of trauma is out and incredibly government that's not willing to take action, mm. even in the year old. Well, let me pick up on that because, you know, you, as we said right off top, you're now these days an anti-gun violence advocate. And I wonder the, the feeling that you have, the, the level of discouragement you have, because we don't see a lot of U.S. political leaders willing to take on the gun industry, even after Sandy Hook, where people said when you're talking about six-year-olds being victims of, of mass gun violence, you would think political leaders would stand up. That was a time that a lot of us were hopeful that it would be a breaking point because Columbine hadn't been, Virginia Tech hadn't been. For whatever reason, those incidents weren't horrific enough. Um, and then in 2013, we saw those measures kind of lose support in the Senate and the focus shifted away. And here we are back now in 2018. There's the shooting down in Parkland, Florida. We had our midterm election in November. And that's where I actually am a little bit optimistic because we were able to take a lot of seats in the House of Representatives and gain a majority of representatives who support gun safety legislation. Um, they've already passed in their first 100 days measures that would save lives every day in America. And that bill is being hung up in the Senate already. Mm -hmm. um, incredibly frustrating um, to know that there are ways that we can make a difference and we can save lives, even just one a day in any state that person is worth everything to their family and their friends. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to have our government turn away year after year um, and just continue with the thoughts and prayers. You know, we're, we're quickly losing time here, but Jimmy, I do want to ask you because later today there will be a memorial at Columbine High School to mark the 20th anniversary. I'm wondering what you hope people will take away from that. What do you hope the reflection will be as people note the fact that it has been two decades since what was the, the worst school shooting at the time in the United States? 
Um, what I want for people to take away is that you can make a difference. We as individuals can make a difference. In 20 years, we've raised a generation to accept these shootings and active shooter drills in their schools as normal. We can change that with kindness. We can change that with the way we raise our kids and the values that we instill with them and the resources we provide them in their schools. We can continue to make progress. Um, kindness and love and helping each other is what I would like for people to remember about Columbine today.